People need reasons to have children. Uh, they've known today, and they've known for a long time, how to avoid having children. Um, if there's no economic incentive to having children, um, people won't unless something other than economic incentive gives them a reason. I don't think that the economic changes would have uh, had much impact and the absence of the value changes. So I think it's, uh, it's basically a matter of um, changes and attitudes, values, beliefs, um, characteristics of uh, the individual. The stock market from the beginning of 1990 to its bottom in 2003 went down 80%. Now these are blue chip stocks, the Nikkei. It's like the S&P 500 or the Dow here. We were some of the only people in the world to see this because we were looking at demographics. Everybody else was saying, oh, Japan's government doing this and then their companies are this productive and they have these management methods and their people save more and they work harder. Those were all symptoms. Demographics said, boom, and then bust, and yes, everything unraveled. Real estate, stocks, everything. Well, another reaction a lot of people have when they first hear of these trends is to think that the young are going to benefit enormously because there'll be fewer of them. They'll, they'll, therefore, it'll be easier for them to find a job and to get a good wage. What I call the aging trap uh, is uh, the fact that the pyramid is in, inverted, and so you have a significant amount of older people over the young, pe young people, and therefore you cannot support the elderly. If you look at countries like Italy or Spain, where they're in the advanced throes of population aging, there's a theoretical demand for youth, but in the real world, uh, the youth unemployment rates in double digits. The aging trap is very serious for many reasons. One is because financially, countries, and we see it today in Europe, in Asia, um, cannot be supported. Uh, the social services, especially in social market economies, this is uh, especially acute. The result is uh, the economy doesn't produce jobs. We are accustomed to financing retirement and health benefits for, for the elderly by taxes on the working population. Right now, the baby boom generation, the vast number of people born from 1946 through 1964, are in the workforce. They're paying into the system, helping fund the benefits that are being provided to the people who are already retired. But over the upcoming years, we're going to see that set of people move into the retirement phase. If these taxes go up because we have fewer people, we have to tax them each more, that's going to be a, a burden on the younger population, and they will adjust to that burden in a number of ways, partly maybe by investing less in their human capital, partly by maybe working less, and that will have further negative consequences. Social Security is only one part of the problem that we confront on the fiscal front. Medicare and Medicaid are a much bigger problem. Their growth is absolutely staggering under current law. Can we rethink our, our approach to retirement benefits, medical care of the elderly, and uh, adjust it to the world we will be in, which will be a world of stationary or declining population? The current generations, particularly those who are now retired and those who are approaching retirement, are not fulfilling their proper responsibilities towards future generations. Japan was a great leading indicator for developed countries.